Does the Bible say anything about current events? It certainly does. It's our focus to be culturally relevant and to communicate a perspective from the scriptures. As Christians, we should have a biblical perspective of the news and be able to share that perspective with others. Welcome to today's News and Biblical Views. As you've heard me say many times on this program, we try to pick up on things that are happening in the news and show you a biblical perspective. If you read the newspaper, you will know what's happening in the world. But if you read the Bible, it'll tell you why things are happening in the world. Today I want to do a teaching on the subject, how to stay on target with God. If you have a target, you've got to be focused in order to strike the target. So how do you stay on focus with God? King Jehoshaphat stayed on focus and God brought great victory. Let's look at a passage of scripture in 2 Chronicles chapter 20 verses 1 to 9 and then verse 12. Listen to the word of God. After this, the Moabites and Ammonites, with some of the Munites, came to wage war against Jehoshaphat. Some people came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army is coming against you from Edom, from the other side of the Dead Sea. It is already in Hazantor, Tarma, that is, En Gedi. They are armed, Jehoshaphat, resolved to inquire of the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast for all Judah. The people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. Then Jehoshaphat stood up in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem at the temple of the Lord in the front of the new courtyard and said, Lord, the God of our ancestors, are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand, and no one can withstand you. Our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? And they have lived in it and have built in it a sanctuary for your name, saying, If a calamity comes upon us, whether sword of judgment or plague of famine, we will stand in your presence before this temple that bears your name, and we will cry out unto you in our distress, and we will hear and save us. You will hear and save us. Our God, Will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. Amen. Jehoshaphat kept his eyes upon the Lord. And when his eyes were on the Lord, God brought victory to him. We have to be focused. If we are going to stay on target with God, the first thing we must do is to be focused. These five key words that I will be sharing with you today came from one of Dr. Charles Stanley's writings. I'm not sure if it was the book, Keeping in Step with the Lord, or which one of his books. But I want to share with you these five key words, focused, firm, faithful, fruitful, and fearless. So if we are going to be on target with God, we must first of all be focused. Focus is so important in sports. If you are a golfer, you got to keep your eye on the ball. If you are an archer, you got to keep your eye on the target. No matter what you are doing, if you're playing football, baseball, basketball, any sports, Mental focus is absolutely important. When King Jehoshaphat was surrounded by these many armies, he didn't know what to do. 
and there in verse 12 in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, he called upon the Lord and he said, Lord, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great enemy that comes against us. And we don't know what to do. But then King Jehoshaphat said, but our eyes are upon you. When your eyes are upon the Lord, you will be able to do amazing things. Take, for instance, Tony Dungy, former coach of the Super Bowl champions, the Indianapolis Colts. This is what Tony Dungy said. One of the things I have learned along the way is having the courage to stand by my convictions. Those things that I know are right, those guiding principles that I know to stick with. Sometimes that means standing out from the crowd or not being popular. But sometimes that's the only responsible place to be. And that takes real courage to do what you think is best, even when you might be ridiculed for it. Stand by your convictions. Summon the courage to be uncommon. Remember that what you do when no one is watching matters. Hang in there. Character is revealed through adversity. Don't rationalize your way around honesty. Don't blow your own horn. Some of the most rewarding times in life are when you have to stand alone even if you are not comfortable doing so. Here in the scripture of 2 Chronicles chapter 20, we find Jehoshaphat staying focused on the Lord, and God brought victory. Are you focused? What are you focused on in life? You may say, well, I'm, I'm focused on my career. I'm focused on raising a family. I'm, I'm focused on being a pastor. I'm focused, but are you focused on the Lord? The most important person should be the Lord in your life. You put him first and you will be absolutely amazed at what God will do in you and through you. Jesus said in Matthew 6, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Many people seek all the other things of life, and they lose their focus from the Lord. Stay focused on Him, and you will be on target with God. And the second key word is firm. Be firm. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, therefore, be focused on the Lord. Be focused. And he says, don't worry about what you're going to do, but he says, stay focused on the things of the Lord. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Your labor is not in vain. Stay firm. Stay firm as a rock. In the key principles, don't move. Be un compromising. Dr. Charles Stanley is one of my heroes. He's now in heaven. I had the privilege of meeting Dr. Stanley in 2006 when he came to Stabler Arena here in Bethlehem. And I had about 20 minutes with him. A man from our church, Pat Breslin, formed a leadership team and had a conference at Stabler Arena. And I was sitting in the audience with my brother and Pat says, Pastor, come with me. And he took me around the back of the stage and introduced me to Dr. Charles Stanley. Dr. Stanley took a folding chair, and pulled it right up, almost knee to knee, and he looked at me and he said, tell me about your life. And I had 20 minutes, I'll never forget it. Dr. Stanley put his hand on my shoulder and prayed for me. It was a very moving experience. We're looking at the subject of how to stay focused or how to stay on target with the Lord. You have to be focused and firm. We have more to talk about, so don't go away. We'll be right back.
Today's news and biblical views is produced and recorded in the studios of Lighthouse TV. Positively different. Welcome back to today's news and biblical views. On the program today, I'm doing a teaching on the subject, how to stay focused on the Lord. How to stay focused, how to stay on target with the Lord. And sometimes I take messages that I've done and I put them in the form of a little card. And if you'd be interested, if you contact me or contact the station, I'd be happy to send you the key points from this teaching and the scriptures that go with it. How to stay on target with God. First of all, you have to be focused. Second of all, you have to be firm. And if you are focused, you will be firm. Now let's look at a quote from Dr. Charles Stanley, also about staying focused and firm. Dr. Stanley was the pastor of First Baptist Church of Atlanta, Georgia, a deep, a man of deep convictions. In his book, in step with God, he wrote these words. Don't ever compromise your convictions. Even if you are the last person standing, remain steadfast to what God has given you to do because his way is the best way. Absolutely. Dr. Stanley was a man of convictions. And that's one of the things that he shared with me. He shared with me Joshua 1.9. Don't be afraid, he says. Have not I commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. If we're going to stay on target with God, we first of all must be focused and then firm. And thirdly, we must be faithful. God looks for faithfulness. In fact, I think with all the craziness that's going on in our world today, God is still looking for a remnant of born again believers, men and women, teenagers, young people, children that are part of a remnant. They will remain faithful to the Lord no matter what happens. Are you faithful even in little things? In Luke chapter 16, verse 10, Jesus said, he that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. But he that is unjust or dishonest and that which is least will be unjust in much. Are you faithful in little things? Or do little things just sort of pass you by and you say, oh, that doesn't really matter. That's, that's such a little thing. Don't worry about it. God is concerned about the little things. In Matthew chapter 25, verse 21, 23, he says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a, a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. The Lord wants us to be faithful even in the little things. A quick story on being faithful. A man was being considered for a promotion. He worked in a bank and he went out to lunch with his employer and they had lunch at a cafeteria. They went through the line, you put your food on the tray, then you go to the cashier and you pay. Well, this man who was being considered for the promotion took two little pats of butter, put one on his plate, but the other he slid under his napkin. Just such a little thing. He did not get the promotion. And he went into the boss's office and he said, why didn't I get the promotion? And the boss said, I I'm not sure I can really trust you. He said, I've worked here for years. What did I ever do to give you reason to think you couldn't trust me? And so the employer said, when we went out to lunch at the cafeteria, did you take a little pat of butter and slip it under your napkin? And the man said, that is such a little thing. But the boss said, if you will do dishonest things with little things, you may do dishonest things with bigger things. The man did not 
get the promotion. He no doubt lost out on thousands of nickels. Be faithful. The Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and chapter 5 about being faithful to the Lord. And it tells us faithful is he who calls you, who also will do it. Missionary Hudson Taylor was used mightily of the Lord. And Hudson Taylor said this, small things are small things, but faithfulness with a small thing is a big thing. I want to encourage you to be faithful. Be faithful to the Lord in the small things. Live your life for an audience of one. Whether anyone is watching you or not, be a man, be a woman, be a teenager, be a young person of honesty and integrity. And be aware of the fact that someone is watching you at all times, and it is the Lord. Be focused, be firm, be faithful, and then you will be fruitful. In John chapter 15, Jesus spoke about he being the vine and we are the branches. And he said, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If we're going to stay on focus and on target with the Lord, we have to be remembering what he taught us. And Jesus said that if I, if my word abides in you, he said, you will bring forth fruit. Does God's word abide in you? Do you love the word of God? Jesus is the word. He is the word that became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of truth, full of truth. The word of God is truth. Jesus said, sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. Are you fruitful? Before Jesus ascended back into heaven, he said in John 17, 4, I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work you gave me to do. Jesus was only 33 years old when he went back to heaven. I've often wondered why didn't God allow Jesus to, to live to be 60, 70, to be 100 years old. It was not in God's plan. He spent the first 30 years living with his parents, being a carpenter in his father's carpenter shop. And just three years, he accomplished his ministry. He laid down his life on the cross to pay the penalty for all who will believe. He was raised from the dead to be our Savior and Lord. Jesus was a man who was focused and firm and faithful and fruitful. We have a little more to share with you in the last segment. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Watch Lighthouse TV wherever you go. Available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, and Apple TV. You can view our in-house studio productions on demand or watch what's on the station right now with our 24-7 live stream. Search Lighthouse TV online on your streaming device or go to our website, lighthousetv.org, for more information. Lighthouse TV, positively different. Welcome back to today's news and biblical views. Again, today we're looking at the subject of how to stay how to stay in touch with the Lord, how to stay on target with the Lord. You must be focused. You must be firm. You must be faithful. You must be fruitful. God wants us to be fruitful. He wants us to bear the fruit of the spirit of love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, goodness, faith or faithfulness, meekness and temperance, or self-control. He wants us to be fruitful in bringing other people to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Do you have a burden for lost people? Has God put a burden in your heart where you want to share Christ? You want to share Jesus with your family, your, your neighbors, your friends. You want to go anywhere and everywhere the Lord is calling you. 
in Romans chapter one, it talks about bearing fruit. And Paul said, when I came to you, when I came to Rome, I wanted to have some fruit among you. He meant he wanted to bring people to know Jesus as Savior and Lord. Are you a fruitful Christian? If other people were to describe you, would they say, he bears, she bears the fruit of the Spirit. She's a fruitful person, a generous person, a loving, caring person, a Christ-like person. If we are staying on target with the Lord, then we will be fruitful. And lastly, we will be fearless. In Proverbs chapter 28, verse 1, the Bible says, The wicked flee when no man pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. God can help us to be bold. And boldness is not brashness. If we are bold in what we say or do, that doesn't mean we're going to be bold. We're going to be unkind. We're going to be just like a bull in a china shop. Boldness is unafraid. You're unafraid, and you're willing to do what God tells you to do. Boldness is unembarrassed freedom of speech. Are you embarrassed to talk about the Lord Jesus Christ? You know, John MacArthur is another of my favorite heroes of the faith, and John MacArthur, seeing what's happening in this world, put together a message called, When God Abandons a Nation. I would encourage you to go online and look up that that message, When God Abandons a Nation. And in that message, John MacArthur said, I would suggest that this is not a good time for weak men to be preaching weak messages in weak churches. This is a time for bold, strong, powerful, biblical messages that proclaim the Word of God and call people to respond. And then Dr. MacArthur said, this is our only hope for people or for individuals. This is our hope, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Unless people's hearts are changed, there will be no real lasting change in their behavior. And as Christians, sometimes we expect Christian behavior from non-Christian people. They're just not going to live like Christians. Now, there are some people who are not saved. They've never been born again, and they live an exemplary life. And sometimes people refer to people even in the cults today. They say, well, look at the Jehovah's Witness. Look at the Mormons, how they live. And sometimes they live very good lives, but their theology is really off base from what the Word of God truly teaches. Be fearless. The Bible says that after they had prayed, Acts 4, 31, and when they had prayed, the play, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God with boldness. Even the very building where they were gathered together, it shook, and the people were bold. They had unembarrassed freedom of speech. Are you bold or are you afraid? We will either be controlled by fear or by faith. Put your faith in the Lord and ask him to give you boldness in order to proclaim his word. Just to be able to talk to your spouse about Jesus or with your children or your grandchildren. Take the initiative. Let him fill you with his boldness. You know, when we go into the scriptures in the book of Acts, the Bible tells us that the apostles, the people around them that saw them, the religious leaders, they said they took notice of the apostles, that they had been with Jesus, and they had such a boldness about them. We need boldness today. The Word of God speaks so much about this, and you need boldness even in the time of a crisis. When John Newton was a slave trader, it was during a great storm at the sea when he was afraid that he was going to lose his life, and he cried out to God for mercy, and God changed the heart of John Newton. He had a foul mouth. He was a very evil man, and God changed his life. You say, well, I think I'm too far gone. I don't think my life could change. 
the Apostle Paul was a murderer. He was persecuting Christians. He was injuring people. He was taking Christians and having them turned over to the authorities. But Paul's life was changed during a crisis moment when the Lord appeared to him on the road to Damascus. John Wesley was on a ship and during a terrible storm, he saw the faith. He saw the calmness and the peace of the Moravians on the ship when they could be singing and praising God and possibly losing their life any moment. And John Wesley's heart was so moved that when he went back to England from being in America, he went to Aldersgate Street. And there he heard someone reading the preface to the book of Romans. And John Wesley said it was about a quarter to nine, it was in the evening, about a quarter to nine, and my heart was strangely warmed. And John Wesley knew that he believed, he truly believed, and God gave him the assurance of his salvation. It was during a storm when he was very fearful, but he realized how much he needed Jesus Christ. Maybe you're going through a storm. I conclude that for many people, unless they're down and out, unless they're in prison, unless they've been through an accident, or they've received the diagnosis of cancer, many people are not turning to the Lord. But when a great crisis comes, like with King Jehoshaphat, they know where to turn. And even if you haven't turned to the Lord yet, I encourage you to turn to the Lord. He will help you to stay on target with Him. And you can be focused and firm and faithful and fruitful and fearless. And if you've never repented of your sins, humble your heart before the Lord. Humble yourself, repent, turn away from sin. Invite Jesus Christ to come into your life by faith. It's all by faith that we're saved, by His grace. He'll change you and He'll put you on focus. Stay on target with God. Thank you so much for watching today's program. God bless you.